Hello everybody and welcome back to the Common Running Mistakes video series here with me, Dr. Cameron Garber, with Body Smart and Preston Johnson with Wasatch Run Club. Club, We're so excited to have you in here again today. Um, again, we're at the trailhead here at Fruity Loops, just enjoying the beautiful weather and the amazing scenery. And so uh, coming to you today to talk a little bit more about one of the common running mistakes I see a lot of people make and that is near and dear to my heart is not running slow enough on your slow days. On your easy days, not running easy enough. And so we're gonna help define that for you a little bit today. We're gonna help, uh, you know, you understand a little bit more why that's important and what that looks like and how to do it. So I wanna give a few shout outs to get started. Um, as we have in some of our other videos, wanna make sure that we uh, give props to uh, Run for Fun, a wonderful group uh, out there, as well as Utah Running. Um, thanks so much for supporting us and the Utah Running Shop. That's where I get all my gear and love those guys for sure. Um, Preston, go ahead. Yeah, I got to give a shout out to my uh, personal sponsors that have helped me in my athletic career, uh, Solomon Running and Gnarly Nutrition. Um, they've both always been there for me, uh, making sure that I'm geared up with what I need to uh, really succeed in the running world. Um, and like Cameron said, the Wasatch Run Club. Um, being a group that I had just barely launched um, and really excited about and uh, ready to get going. Yeah, so super excited about that. Um, glad to be able to introduce these uh, videos and these topics to people. Really want to help people avoid some of the mistakes that we see all the time in the clinic and in Preston sees training with uh, some of his colleagues that really kind of get in the way of people hitting their goals. So this common running mistake of not running your slow runs slow enough, or your easy yeah. runs easy enough. Um, yeah. We're all a culprit of it. It's yeah. uh, something that is too common out there um, to be, right. yeah. I mean, I growing up in high school and college, um, it almost becomes this, uh, you know, who's manly or... Uh, right, oh, it's so hard to do. Teammate versus teammate, runs get way too fast and, uh, um, and that's more unproductive for you than, in my opinion, almost just taking the day off. Yeah, um, because it can be. It yeah, can you're digging you yourself back. in a deeper hole, yeah. and uh, if it becomes a chronic thing, it can be something that uh, can be a real problem for you. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it often causes more problems than just not running even. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's a, where a lot of injuries come from and, and other things. Pushing too hard every day, um, getting depleted, it's where... Um, a lot of fatigue and, and why people don't love it sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, why they don't love running is because it's hard every day because they feel like they have to go out and run hard every single run. Yeah. And so I'm a big advocate of the 80-20 running concept of 80% actually fairly slow and then 20% fast. That polarization of training, right? Yeah. And so there's a million different tangents I could go off on that. Um, of that 80-20 running and how I use the metabolic testing to measure exactly where those zones are of what's an easy zone of your heart rate and what's a hard zone and all those things. But basically in a nutshell, it's you should spend 80% of your training volume going fairly slow, steady and controlled so that you have enough in the tank when you go hard that you can go all the way hard and really work on the mechanics of speed and that high speed endurance and all those types of things. And really it's about helping your body make the right types of adaptations that it needs to make to build those metabolic systems for running fast or for endurance. And so we do a better job at building those metabolic systems at both ends of the spectrum, at low, low and high, high but not so much in the middle, and that's where most of us like to hang out. Yep. Every run becomes somewhat of a just right in the middle, and if you think about, uh, like Cameron said, your training program, you want to be on the far end um, when you're training, especially when you're doing your hard workouts. You want to be able to hit that very top end, uh, which you can't do if you come into it fatigued because your other runs right. are too fast. Yeah, oh, big time. So that's one thing that I, I see a lot and, and talk to people a lot is like how to, how to work that out right how to to find out those zones and all that but really the idea behind it is helping you have the energy and, and stamina and all those types of things that you might need um, to be able to go hard enough um, one 
of the, the key principles that I, I try to hammer home with people is kind of what that looks like and feels like. Um, I obviously like to use heart rate as that gauge, but if you don't have heart rate, how, how do you do that? Yeah, a lot of it's gonna come off your perceived exertion. Mm -hmm. um, if you're out there running on an easy day and you ever feel like you're getting to a point where um, you need to slow down, you are probably going too hard to begin with. Yeah. Um, and so not only should you slow down, you should go slower than what um, you perceive you need to be doing. A lot of the coaches and people that I've worked with have said that uh, your easy days should feel too easy. You should feel guilty about them. Yeah. You should feel like by the time you get to the end, you're like, oh man, like that was so slow. I'm not gonna have any benefit from it. Easy. Right. Like that's what right. I'm looking for. In this right. And and that's the crazy part is you don't realize how much benefit you're getting out of a slow run. We think that we're not getting benefit. We're actually getting more benefit out of that. Um, and we could dive into kind of the science behind that and why that is, the interleukin-6 development and all these other things. Um, but that really is a critical thing. So if you've had a hard time with this, making your slow run slow enough, I want you to go ahead and raise your hand. Drop your, uh, your comment down below, like, uh, not slow enough, you know. Sh share that with us. And, and you know, if you have any comments, questions about that, feel free to drop those in the comments down below. We'd love to hear what you have to say or what your thoughts are on running slow. One of the things that I think most runners do is they say, I'm gonna go run for 45 minutes or an hour, hour and a half. And so they think in their mind, I'm gonna run as hard as I can for that 45 minutes to hour and a half to get as much benefit out of that run as I can. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is where, where that is um, kind of in our training zones, if you will, that's what I like to use is the zone training. So they talk about that a lot. Where that is in our zones is typically an area where we're burning only about 30% fat, um, sometimes even less. So some people, especially that are a little bit more willing to suffer, it's more like 10 to 15% fat. So they're burning predominantly carbohydrate. And so it's just making them hungry and it, they're just burning through the same calories that they're eating back all the time. And that's one of the biggest reasons why people will tell you like, oh, I don't really lose weight while running or I've gained weight while running or running's not great for weight loss. One of the biggest reasons is people run too hard. Mm -hmm. um, and so they're, they're always training harder than what their metabolism can really keep up with. And so they wind up burning mostly carbohydrate, depleting their body of that small um, amount of storage. So on, on our body at any given time, most people have somewhere between 1600 and about 2200 or 2000 calories worth of carbohydrate at any given time. Whereas fat, we have a reservoir of anywhere from, Preston's probably got somewhere around 60,000 calories, 70,000 calories worth of fat on his body. Um, I've probably got more like 110, 120 to, um, you know, I uh, tested people that have more like 300,000. Um, so there's, there's this big range of how many calories we have on our body. Fat, we have a ton. Carbohydrate is really limited. And because I only store that carbohydrate in different areas of my body instead of being able to use it globally like we can fats, if I burn up the 200 calories that may be in my right quad or my quads in general, I'm depleted of that and all of a sudden they run out of, of quick energy that they can use and you start to hit the wall, you start to feel sluggish, you're breathing harder and all those things. And so you have to then recover and replenish all of that carbohydrate before you can run again or you're just starting out depleted. And so that's why running slow is really helpful is we can run in a range where we're more like 60, 70% fat or 50 to 50 to 70% fat depending on where you're at and how well trained you are. And you don't ever deplete that carbohydrate reserve or minimally deplete that so that you can recover much more quickly and you're good to go the next day. Yeah, and you know that spectrum of whether you're burning fat or carbohydrates um, really isn't developed unless you're in that specific zone. Right. Um, and so if you're thinking about, you know, racing a marathon, a half marathon, even a 10K, a 10K is 80% aerobic, um, with a marathon being all the way up to 99% aerobic. Um, and you haven't developed in those easy runs your body's efficiency, level of efficiency of burning fat, 
um, then that's going to be a shock to you. Um, the better you can get at using fat as energy, the more efficient you're going to be in those long races because that's going to be your predominant um, source of fuel throughout those runs. It's my sister-in-law. <laughs> Um, another great physical therapist here in the area. So, um, anyway, sorry. Totally, totally true though. Yeah, we won't be as efficient. Um, and it, it'll definitely set us back in the long run. We wind up not making the, the right type of progress that we're hoping to. So, um, there's this concept of running slow to get faster. And it's actually very, very true. Um, when we spend more time running slow, it means that we can put more time in on the high end training fast and we actually make better progress. And so that's hard for people to get their mind around that they, they kind of want to push to the edge with every run and we just don't progress that way. That's just not how we're wired to progress. When you think about it from like an evolutionary standpoint, our ancestors did not work hard every single day. They worked moderately hard every single day. And so a couple of the cues that we use often for people that, that either don't have access to the metabolic testing and the heart rate training and stuff like that, um, one of the cues we use to help people understand where they can be in their zone better at is um, A, that perceived exertion. So on the scale of zero being no effort and 10 being maximal effort, um, if you were to rate that, you wanna hang out kind of around a four, five, six. At six, you're kind of pushing it a little too hard, and four, you're probably a little on the light side. And so five is really that sweet spot um, where you wanna go, where you can um, still, so the I guess the other way is your breath and your breathing. So you still wanna be able to talk and hold a conversation, almost like Preston and I are right now. Um, you'll, you'll definitely have to pause and, and take some deeper breaths every so often. But the way I talk, I have to do that anyway. Um, uh, but really, you shouldn't be at that level where you're saying like a sentence and then he heavy breathing and then another sentence and heavy breathing. You really should feel very comfortable. So uh, kind of one of the ways that I term it with people that I heard from another runner was um, being comfortably uncomfortable and then uncomfortably uh, uncomfortable and those, that kind of like, yeah. and, and where along that spectrum, um, I, I think you should be in that comfortable zone. Not, not quite to the uh, comfortably uncomfortable. Um, that's maybe pushing a little bit too hard. That's that kind of zone three that I call it junk mile zone where most runners like to run is that mm -hmm. comfortably uncomfortable. I can, I can sustain this for an hour. Um, that zone is kind of the no improvement zone. It's not bad for your heart and lungs and your general health, but we're not really making improvements there. You really wanna be in that comfortable zone. You should end a run feeling like you had a lot left in the tank. And and like you said, you should kind of feel guilty about it. Like, yeah. oh man, I really didn't push myself very far Definitely. on that one. That's how you should feel. Yeah. You know, in my experience, the most difficult part about these easy runs is going to be holding yourself accountable. Mm -hmm. um, when you oh, get to um, out on the road, you have all the intention in the world to go out there and run easy, um, but then maybe you start feeling a little bit better than you had thought you would. Right. You start rolling, you look down at your watch, and all of a sudden you're running two minutes faster per mile right. um, than you should be. Muscles warm up, you start um, feeling good. Yeah. And I'm more guilty of this than uh, just about any of you out there. Um, I love going fast. It feels good and uh, the freedom of running quick on the trails or out on the roads is just it's a blast but yeah. um, there's a certain level of responsibility and of uh, um, dedication you have to have to be able to have the easy days. Yeah. Um, and so some of the things that I've liked to use in my training that have helped me with that have been uh, running with certain uh, running partners that'll yeah. you know keep me accountable to my pace. When there's two people there usually it's easier to uh, lock into a certain pace and not feel like you're um, going to speed up on your own naturally because you have someone else to kind of pull you back in um, and vice versa. You do that for them as well. Um, and then uh, running on a treadmill has been a good one as well um, just because you can lock in that certain pace. Definitely. And whether you're feeling good or you're feeling bad, um, this is going to stay that consistent pace so you can adjust accordingly so you can make sure your runs are easy enough. Yeah. Um, as so much as as much as we hate the treadmill sometimes, yeah. right? It can really be helpful in monitoring your load that way. 
Yeah, it definitely has its benefits. Yeah. Um, and I use it quite a bit, especially on my easy days for that. Yeah. Um, and then uh, just focusing, I mean, it just it's, it takes practice, just like doing hard workouts does um, to be able to run easy and run slow. Yeah, I, it is hard sometimes. So my wife always calls me like a horse to the barn. You got some awesome background going on. Um, my wife always calls me the horse going back to the barn, right? A horse likes to speed up when it knows it's going home because it just wants to get home. I do that a lot, um, especially hill climbing. I like to just get to the top and then on my way back home. And so she always makes fun of me because she's like, this is your program. You're the one that's all about 8 and 20 and you can't even run slow. And so it is, it's hard sometimes. It's so to much slow easier your... to coach somebody to do it than do it yourself. Right. Well, because kind of our natural comfortable pace is usually a little bit faster. So we have to run below that kind of where we're comfortably uncomfortable. Yeah. You have to run below that pace and that that's hard, takes some mental diligence. I, I'll have a lot of people say it almost hurts and you get used to it, you get to where you can do it and you find where those different gears are and stuff like that. But really, spending time running slow enough is what's gonna keep you healthy and what's gonna help you make progress in the long run. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So, I mean, that it's a harder concept to master than it sounds. Um, but just going out and running easy, it may even be a walk run for you, um, where you walk um, most of the time to keep your heart rate low enough and, and you keep it really easy. I promise, though, if you stick with that and you do the walk run or you keep it really light at first, your slow progressively gets faster and faster. <laughs> Preston's slow is a lot faster than my slow. Right, and so as you get more fit, if you if you stay dedicated to that, I promise that your slow will get faster, and you'll get better and better at it, and eventually you'll crush it and be one of those super fast runners that we see passing us in the marathon. Like, man, how do I get as fast as that guy? The key is to slow down when it's time to run slow, and run fast when it's time to run fast. Yeah. Cool. Well, that's all uh, I have planned for today. Yeah, that's I all I got too. You all for tuning in to our series here and we look forward to have you guys for future episodes awesome